blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Let us rest in a moment of silence for personal reflection, and then we will pray our confession. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those who need, we can walk on and pass by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life, save us from ourselves, and free us to love our neighbor. and mercy. 
first reading today is from Genesis. Then the Lord said, How great is the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah, and how very grave their sin. I must go down and see whether they have done all together according to the outcry that has come to me. And if not, I will know. So the men turned from there and went toward Sodom, while Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham came near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are fifty righteous within the city. Will you then sweep away the place and not forgive it for the fifty righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous fare as the wicked. Far be that from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just? And the Lord said, if I find at Sodom fifty righteous in the city, I will forgive the whole place for their sake. Abraham answered, Let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord, I who am but dust and ashes. Suppose five of the fifty righteous are lacking. Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five? And he said, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five there. Again he spoke to him, Suppose Forty are found there. He answered, For the sake of forty, I will not do it. Then he said, Oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak. Suppose thirty are found there. He answered, I will not do it if I find thirty there. He said, Let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose twenty are found there. He answered, For the sake of twenty, I will not destroy it. Then he said, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak just once more. Suppose ten are found there. He answered, For the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm responsive reading today comes from Psalms 138. I will read the odd verses and I'll ask you as the congregation to respond with the even verses. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praises. I will bow down towards your holy temple and praise your name because of your steadfast love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and the word of all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. Thank you. 
come, give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us, and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has a rug and I have nothing to set before him. And he answered from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything, because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, Ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks, receives. And everyone who searches, finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a steak instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion. If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated. So today's gospel reading has some familiarity to it. Luke is one of two places that the Lord's Prayer is in Scripture. As a church, we are more familiar with Matthew's version because it is longer and it is much closer to what we pray each Sunday here at Baby. In the first verse, Jesus is praying. This story comes right after their house visit to Martha and Mary. Maybe the visit was just a little too much, and he needed time away to regroup. Following the prayer, one of the disciples comes up and asks him if he will teach them to pray. Just like John the Baptist taught his disciples to pray. Jesus obliges. The prayer that he teaches them is a Jewish prayer in its structure and content. He gives them a pattern to follow. And in that pattern, there are five petitions. Most scholars believe that even though the pattern and the petition can be very powerful. For us, the real purpose of Jesus teaching on the prayer is the Father of God. Before I get into the fatherhood, I want to spend just a brief moment on pattern and petition. The reason is that I hear many individuals who still seek guidance on how to pray. Maybe this very simple acronym can guide you if you get in a rut or are looking for a new pattern or method. The acronym is ACTS, Adoration, Confession, Thanksgiving, and Supplication. Now back to the fatherhood that seemed to be Luke's main focus. Luke decided that he would concentrate on a father-child relationship. God is rarely addressed as father in the Jewish prayers, so this would have piqued their interests of the listeners. So why did Jesus take this approach, Jesus was wanting to teach his disciples that they could approach God as they approach their own fathers. When we call the God of universe Father, it signifies a personal relationship. 
Now here is where I'll be honest with you and tell you that I have always struggled with this concept. I had a great relationship with my father. But I know some individuals who have had terrible relationships with their dad. And thinking of God as a father is the last thing that they want. Some even saw that this father-child language was a barrier. So then, as I began to study this relationship a little deeper, I once again realized the importance of understanding the culture and the time of the writing. This is something that I don't think many of us participate in. Luke was writing to a Gentile Christian audience, and their experience with their fathers would be vastly different than their Jewish counterparts. For example, in the Greco-Roman culture, fathers had complete control over their children and grandchildren. The father could decide whether the newborn child will be raised in the family, sold, or even killed. So many individuals of the time did not have a high view of fathers. Yet, Luke uses this language. Luke wanted to introduce the Gentiles to a God that is generous, loving, and attentive to all of God's children's needs. That is quite a shift in the narrative, don't you think? So Luke completely changes the audience perspective on fatherhood by presenting God as a father who cares completely for their children. And more importantly, acts in a redemptive manner on their behalf. Now that was quite a story for them to hear. They no longer had to view the father-child relationship out of fear. Instead, they could see the relationship out of love. They can now hold on to a dear new you. That view included the fact that the God of the universe is a personal, intimate, sacred, and a trusted authority. This is the reason for the language, our Father is so vital. Luke not only wanted to encourage his Gentile audience to be persistent in their prayer, which we will get to later, but he wanted to encourage them that they could have a father-child relationship with God. And this new understanding, they were able to shift their thoughts on their relationship with God. The foundation of their relationship could now be based out of generosity and confidence. So following the prayer, Jesus transitions into an illustration of an individual who goes to his neighbor because he is in need. However, it's midnight. We had a pretty in-depth conversation on persistence at our Tuesday morning Bible study. We shifted the word away from persistence to shamelessness, and then talked about how the story can change our thoughts if the neighbor came to us shamelessly. In 
instead of a continuous persistence. Now, don't think that I'm changing the biblical narrative or the word. Instead, it's how the Greek word has been translated in this instance. The word is anadim. And this word implies a boldness <laughs> that comes from familiarity. The ask is only once. It is not continuous. So the neighbor comes shamelessly, able to ask both because of the familiarity they have with their relationship. The illustration is to help us understand that God can be trusted to respond to our prayers. Going back to the illustration, hospitality was the paramount importance in the first century. We saw that last week in Martha and Mary welcoming Jesus and his disciples into their home. It did not matter if the guest was unexpected or if the guest showed up at midnight. Hospitality was to be offered. So the man who was about to offer the hospitality realizes that he does not have enough bread for his guests. Thus he goes and he asks his friend for bread, even though he had to wake up his friend and his entire household. The friend was shameless in the ask. Another way to think of it is that he is shamelessly counting on his friend's desire not to fail the communal expectation that is at hand. So now, here we go again. We're in the 21st century. We are hearing the story through our lens and not the lens of the original reader. If I would ask the following question, which neighbor in the story is behaving badly? My hunch would be that the majority of you would lean toward the neighbor who woke up his neighbor at midnight. But in the culture of the biblical world, it is the woken up friend who is behaving bad. The ability of his friend to provide hospitality and thus his honor is at stake. He must help and give assistance. We close out this passage and the sermon on the saying about the prayer. We have looked at the Lord's Prayer or the disciples' prayer because of the disciples' ask. We then looked at the parable or the illustration. I would say that the sayings about the prayer may be the most popular. We see it quoted often. We sing songs about it in church. Because it can be done in three words. Ask, search, knock. Once again, I want to challenge you to, to step back from the thinking of this as a call to persistence. It would be more helpful to read the instructions of Jesus through the lens of trust. Jesus is asking us to trust that the divine parent will give us all that we need. For us, part of that need is the Holy Spirit. So as I was thinking about how this text could be connected to our baptismal promises, I kept coming back to living among God's faithful are we able to go to them in our time of need if we are living in relationship with one another? If we live among God's faithful people, are we praying for one another and are we setting up a system at baby where we can
can come to God and come to one another with prayer. I think that I am seeing movements that are going in that direction, and I cannot wait for it to happen. So as I close, I want to share with you two prayers. I share these prayers with the Bible study group. I think that you can easily remember them and put them in your memory bank when you need to call out to God. The prayers come from Anne Lamont, and she shares with them in her book, Traveling Mercies. So here is the first prayer. Help me, help me, help me. And the second prayer is the following. Thank you, thank you, thank you. However you pray, in whatever pattern you choose, allow me, as your pastor, to simply invite you into a deeper, more honest, and a more trustworthy relationship with God, whose truest desire is to be known as a loving parent. Amen. May you rise from the hymn of the day.
eternal presence. Join our voices with theirs as we sing of our great glory. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us in forever in your steadfast love through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. So this morning, we are going to be welcoming a few new members to our congregation. I made a close switch in between the hymn of the day as far as with a new member who asked about wearing the Brewer's jersey that they saw me wearing on 3rd Avenue, so I decided <laughs> to put it on today. So this morning, Jeff and Nancy, Karen and Grace, if you would step forward and Stand in front of the altar rail and face the congregation. That would be greatly appreciative. So you just come on, step up. You can pick in front of the rail and you can face the congregation. I will ask you some questions and I will pray as far as with you. Your questions are going to be I do. And so you just face with me and I will reach out and say I do. And you say I do. So dear friends, we rejoice to receive members of the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church into our fellowship in the gospel. Brothers and sisters in Christ and Holy Baptists, our Lord Jesus Christ received you and made you members of this church and the community of God's people. You have learned from the word of God, love and purpose for you and all creation. You have been nourished at his holy table and call to witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, therefore, I will ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, rejecting sin and confessing the faith of the church and the faith in which we baptize. With us saying the creed already together, I will say the headings, and I will ask you to simply respond with I do. Do you renounce all the forces of evil, the devil, and his empty promises? If so, say, I do. Do you believe in God the Father? If so, say, I do. And do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? If so, respond with, I do. And do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? If so, respond with, I do. At Bayview, we have been highlighting our baptismal promises. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant that God made with you in the holy baptism? To live among God's faithful people, to hear his word and share in his supper, to proclaim the good news of God and Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of our Lord Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all earth. If so, will you simply respond with, I do. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, through water and the Spirit, you have made these men and women your own. You forgave them all of their sins and brought them to newness of life. Continue to strengthen them with the Holy Spirit and daily increase in them your gifts of grace. In the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy and your presence, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Amen. May you share that peace with one another today.
we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field, and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks to the grace. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, opened us a way of everlasting life. And so, with the choirs of angels, with the church on the earth, and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join in with this hymn.
encourage you, if you have the availability, to come to that Bible study. It is on Tuesday mornings at 9 a.m. And this week we will be taking a look at Luke chapter 12, verses 13 through 21, which will be our gospel reading for next Sunday. Jordan? Hi. Um, this past Wednesday was our summer camp car wash. We were raising money for Door Cancer Incorporated. Um, the weather shut us down about 25 minutes early, but in an hour and a half, we still managed to um, wash 28 vehicles. Um, we have a crew of approximately 24 people, eight adults, eight middle school and high school helpers, and eight elementary um, kids. And as of approximately 9.28 this morning, we have $600 to give to Door Cancer. So thank you to all of you. <laughs> Just leave it. Put it back there. Can I turn that off? Just leave it. 